Hello YouTube. Rain is coming down after three weeks of intense heat and I'm back in my workshop. And today we're going to be working on my M3. Even though I've been away working, I've been collecting a substantial amount of parts. Having my neighbours receive the parcels for me. So today we're going to start with a rear cross brace from Specialist Motorsport Engineering, SME. Stop the boot floor cracking even more and tie in the rear strut tops as well. Had a nice silver, tongs and struts. And then we've got this welding bit, welding beneath the boot floor. Then this bit bolts into here, so it ties it all in and it should be completely bulletproof. I've also bought a set of Reparo pole positions of a friend of mine. I went there to do some work on a customer's car he had. Ended up seeing those in one of the back, back offices. He mentioned they were for sale. I pretended I wasn't going to buy them, but secretly we both knew that I was. So anyway, they ended up in the back of the van on the way home. Oh, I've also got a spring change to do, but the springs aren't here yet. Hopefully they'll be here somewhere today and then we can fire them on as well. Before I start though, I'd just like to do a little intro to my M3 because you guys haven't met it before. So this is it, when it's open. So it's an E46, as you can see, it's a 2003. I bought it in February 2019 with some damage and with the boot floor hanging off. Since then I've done a full strip down. We could probably include some pictures here. Anyway, the boot floor was basically not attached anymore. So I seam welded and put the repair plates on. I also powder coated and polybushed the whole rear end, new brake lines, adjustable rear arms, HSD coilovers, yellow speed brakes, these Apex copy wheels. It's supposed to be a budget car, but it's ended up costing me quite a lot of money as usual, but it's good on track. I've done a couple of track days and I'm looking to do some more. It's SMG, I've not owned SMG before, I owned the manual, but I actually quite like the SMG now that it works. I've got the upgraded SMG pump, which I bought from Hack Engineering, which Burkhart Engineering make. I've also got the upgraded fluid in there. Apart from that, it's like engine and drivetrain wise is completely standard, apart from a couple of decats to try and make it a bit louder. Interior is completely standard. I was quite dubious of getting rid of the standard seats. Oh, that's quite a bit of thunder, it's the MOT. I was quite dubious of getting rid of the standard seats because it's the first E46 that I've had with heated, which is lovely. It's in pretty good condition. It's done 147,000 miles. She's still going strong. From the sound of it, when I've looked around it, it's had quite a lot of warranty work. I've got a friend at BMW and we did a chassis number check on it. Let's have a little look around. So by the look of it, it's had a new Vanos unit because it's much cleaner than the rest of the engine. It's also had a new ABS module. They're all common things on these cars, to be honest. I've broken down in it, so it's got a new starter motor. It's also had some headlights on warranty. It had the rod bearings done at 20,000 miles, and I've just redone them at 146,000. Uh, with King race bearings and ARP rod bolts. So all, all in all, it's a pretty sorted car. Like as it is now, I've got H&R roll bars on it, which then meant that the springs that I expect with the HSD coilovers are too stiff. So I'm going one step down on both the springs. At the moment, it's got a 12K front and a 9K rear. It's on a true coilover rear. And I've just ordered 9K front and 7K rear. So hopefully a bit, but be a bit more compliant and also a bit better on the road because it's pretty stiff on the road. So to get started, we're gonna get it up in the air, take the wheels off, get, the, get all this carpet out of the boot, strip all the sides out, start cutting the boot floor ready for this welding brace. So let's go. Later. It looks like this. So as part of the kit, I'm gonna have to chop out this bit here, fill some holes, a bit of welding, joist.
to stop for a little biscuit. We've done most of the cutting. It's pretty painful, but we got there. The brace is in, just loose. Just so I can check fitment. Both sides, we've got a little piece more clean up to do. So we can take it out. Back there, this slide nicely. So they basically tie in the base, which is here, which is where the subframe bolts to, to the side of the boot and therefore the strut top. So it ties in all this bit of metal, which isn't actually, you can just see under there, it's not actually joined properly. This is the problem that causes all of the flex. So yeah, I need to put it all back in, tack these in, drill the holes for the bolts, take the bolts that are currently in the subframe out. Then once it's all tacked and I'm happy with the bolts, I can weld the brace in, weld all of this, put a bit of primer on it and we're good. Still need to hole saw the top piece, but I'm waiting for a hole saw to arrive. So that bit I'll have to go back in afterwards, but I'm making good progress. Got to go to Donington tonight for British GT. So we might have to continue after the weekend, depending on how this afternoon goes. So here we are an hour or so later. We're up in the air now, to do the bit from the bottom. We've got subframe bolts out. That's my nice roll bars. This one's out. I had to drop the exhaust down, hang it to get that off. It's another thing I didn't go through. Put some updated clamps on here because they're all broken. I had to do a bit of welding as well to fix it. Probably get a new exhaust at some point. This one's pretty tired. Heat shielding was gone, so I wrapped it to stop it melting the drive shaft. Uh, as you can see, it's all powder coated to use to fly back arms, HSD coil overs. Um, no spring in the platform up there. Only thing I didn't refurb was the diff because I plan to get a shorter final drive than I'll rebuild the diff. Bolts are out. Now we're going to chase the threads and put the long bolts in. Here I am, really sweaty. Had the welder out. Now bear in mind, I'm not the best MIG welder and these welds are not cleaned up yet. I've literally just finished doing it. I've got a lot of stuff on this torch. I need to clean off the torch as well. But here it goes. So there is one plate side plate for the side side plate base plate now i've gone most of the way around with both of them and plug welded the middle i'm pretty happy with it i mean it's not going to fall off is it and i didn't set fire to the car so we're all good i have uh started video in less in the interest of time really i need to get this done and it takes a long time to do these videos all right we're getting there <sighs> It's hot, it's muggy. This is not a job for this time of year, this is a winter job. But that said, it's not been that bad. The guide that Chris supplies with it is very good. Uh, we've done a step-by-step, -step. I've pretty much followed it to suit, apart from cutting the 50 mm hole saw holes, which I haven't got hole saw, so I'll have to wait. I'll just put some weld through primer on the affected areas, and then I'm gonna drop the brace on the top. I gave it a clean up, cleaned all the splatter off. <sighs> We're getting there. Another job ticked off the list for the E46. <laughs> tonight it's now half past eight my man Scott's helped me I've done some welding and we've primed and seam sealed we've welded the panel back in seam sealed around here after British GT Donington I'll put a coat of steel grey on the bad boy and bolt this in trim the carpets also my springs turned up so we can do that so look forward to part two feel free to like share and subscribe and just generally be a good person <laughs>